What's up guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Nick Vasquez. I'm a realtor out here in the greater Toronto area with Keller Williams. Here are the costs of living in Mississauga. <music> On this channel, we're focusing on bringing you valuable and entertaining content on what it's like to live, eat, sleep, work, and play in Mississauga. If that's something you're interested in, please like the video, tap that subscribe button, and if you're feeling a little extra generous, just hit that little notification bell. In this video, we'll be going over some of the costs of living in Mississauga. So quick explanation before we jump into it. We're gonna be looking at the cost of living index for Mississauga in relation to some of the other major cities in Canada. I tried to find the most accurate data possible, but there might be some discrepancies here but I think it'll give you a general overview of how Mississauga compares to some of the other major cities in the country. So what is the cost of living index? Basically, it looks at how much money you need per month to cover all the basic necessities for a given city. It's basically just breaking down how expensive it is to live in one city versus another. It incorporates all the various expenses of everyday life and then gives you a benchmark number that you can then use to compare between cities. So the way this particular index works is it uses New York City as a baseline. So across the board, they're gonna have 100 in each category. Category. If another city has an index of 120 in one of those categories, that's basically just saying that on average, it's 20% more expensive to live there than New York. And then on the other side, if another city has an index of 90, that means on average, that city is 10% cheaper to live in than New York. So we're going to throw out the whole New York thing because it doesn't really matter, but we are going to use this index to compare Mississauga to some of the other major cities in Canada. We're going to quickly look at some charts and you can see that I put the differences between the two cities on the right hand side. This is pretty self-explanatory but we'll do a quick breakdown of each index. So the cost of living index is the overall index between the two cities, but it does not include housing or rent. It does factor in things like grocery costs, restaurant costs, transportation costs, utilities, leisure activity, just all of the basic kind of necessities that you need to live. So it'll give you a general idea of which city is more expensive to live in. The rent index is an estimation of rent prices. Cost of living plus rent is the same as cost of living, but it now includes that housing element or more accurately, the rent element. Grocery index is an estimation of the grocery costs and restaurant index is an estimation of how much restaurants and bars cost on average in a city. So first up is Mississauga versus Toronto. As you can see, Toronto has a population of 2.93 million compared to Mississauga 720,000. Across the board, Mississauga is generally just cheaper to live in than Toronto. On average, it's about 3% cheaper to live in Mississauga. You can see rent costs are about 7.5% cheaper. Cost of living plus rent is almost 5% cheaper. Restaurants over 16% cheaper and groceries are relatively the same amount. These stats are definitely true as I've found that Toronto is definitely more expensive than Mississauga in general. Things like rent, restaurants, bars, they're all generally just more expensive in Toronto from my experience. This makes sense though, because Toronto is a much bigger city with a lot more to do. So the costs just tend to be a little bit higher. The good thing is, is you could still take advantage of everything that Toronto has while living in Mississauga, cause it's just a short commute away. Next up, we got Mississauga versus Ottawa. So Ottawa's population is at almost a million and you could see that on average, everything is cheaper in Mississauga with the exception of housing. We got a 2% cheaper cost of living, almost 6% cheaper groceries and over 10% cheaper restaurant prices. Of course, the rent index is almost 19% more expensive in Mississauga. And when you factor that into the cost of living, that makes Mississauga 5% more expensive to live in than Ottawa. This makes sense as housing in Mississauga has been booming and affordable housing has been a real issue in this city for a long time. And that actually goes for the greater Toronto area as a whole. Affordable housing has been an issue. There's just not enough houses and the market's just appreciating like crazy and still continues to do so. With Mississauga being a suburb of Toronto and just the amount of people that live here, it's no surprise that house prices are gonna be more here than in Ottawa. Especially when we factor in all the immigration we get, we see over 100,000 people move to the greater Toronto area every year. I'll be going over some more housing numbers later in this video, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, in general, Mississauga is cheaper than Ottawa, of course, with the exception of housing. The third comparison on the list is Montreal with a population of 1.78 million. As you can see, Mississauga is actually more expensive to live in than Montreal on average. Check out this stat. Rent is almost 50% more expensive in Mississauga than Montreal. And that brings the cost of living index with rent to almost 18% more expensive. But you can see that groceries and restaurants are still cheaper in Mississauga compared to Montreal. So it's really just a housing issue here. And honestly, you're gonna see this trend continue with all of these comparisons as anything to do with housing in the greater Toronto area is gonna cost more than the rest 
of the country with the exception of Vancouver, but we'll get to that shortly. Obviously the total cost of living is 4.45% higher in Mississauga, and that's not including rent, but that is factoring in things like utilities, transportation costs, and all that other stuff. Next up is Calgary with a population of 1.336 million. More people there, but the overall cost of living in Calgary is cheaper than Mississauga. Again, housing prices are higher in Mississauga than Calgary, but no surprise there as Calgary's kind of been in a downturn for a little bit. I believe they're back on an upward trend, but don't quote me on that. I'm not a Calgary expert. I'm a greater Toronto area expert. Anyways, we can see that grocery and restaurant prices are generally cheaper in Mississauga with restaurant prices coming in at 12.32% cheaper. So that's good news if you're into food like myself. Now let's look at Edmonton. We'll be super brief because the numbers are comparable to Calgary. With a population of almost 1 million, it's still 2% cheaper to live in Mississauga on average. Housing in Mississauga is more expensive. What a surprise. But other than that, life is cheaper here. Restaurants again with the big savings for Mississauga coming in 15 percent cheaper than Edmonton to go to your favorite restaurants and bars. Finally, let's look at Mississauga versus Vancouver. Although Vancouver's population is less than Mississauga's, it is known to be a very expensive city. And looking at the results, we can see that that's very true. Across the board, Mississauga is cheaper to live in than Vancouver. You can see that housing is a real issue there with it being 11.5% more expensive than Mississauga. Grocery and restaurant prices are pretty high as well. I mean, I guess you got to pay more if you want to live in a super city spot between the oceans and the mountain. Honestly, I'm kind of jealous, although I'm not really a fan of the rain, so that's kind of a downside. Speaking of rain, I actually talk about the weather a bit in a video I put out a couple weeks ago. If you want to see that, just click the little thing above. So that was looking at the various indexes between Mississauga compared to some of the bigger cities. If you think that was helpful, please drop a comment and let me know. And honestly, if you didn't think it was helpful, still drop a comment. I want to hear your thoughts. So before we go into the next part, I just wanted to go over a quick note. If you're looking at these charts I just showed and you're thinking, hey, that's city sounds reasonable, I might want to check that out. Let me know. We have a massive referral network so I can get you in touch with a great agent in whatever city you're looking for worldwide. And I can do some of that legwork up front for you, get you in touch with a really good agent, and then you don't need to worry about that. They'll take care of you. So if you're interested in that, just let me know. I'd be more than happy to find you someone amazing that's going to take really good care of you. Now let's jump into what things actually cost in Mississauga. So first up is home prices. This data is accurate as of April 2021. No surprise here, the Mississauga housing market is very hot with an average purchase price of $1,024,000 and some change. So that's the average price of a home in Mississauga factoring in all the different home types, but that's not really useful. So we broke it down a little bit more. So as you can see, detached homes are soaring with an average price of over $1.5 million. With the way the market's been going and what everyone's dealt with in the past year, it seems that everyone's gravitating towards homes with more space, you know, backyard space. And that's kind of what you get when you buy a detached home in Mississauga. Now, moving on, the average semi-detached home is sitting at around $975,000. Average townhome is sitting at just below $933. Condo townhomes are a bit cheaper, just sitting in at about $750K. This is similar to a townhome, but there are condo fees, so you kind of have to factor that in if you're planning on buying one of these. Finally, condo apartments sitting at an average of $575K. You can definitely find cheaper than this, but most of them are in older buildings or less desirable areas but it is possible to get something cheaper than the average price here. Next up is rental prices for apartments. So again, this data is accurate as of April, 2021. You can see the prices for a bachelor apartment is 1575 a month. A two bed is 2,258. Full house rentals usually start in the mid to upper 2000s and above. And you can usually rent out a room in a house for about six to $800 per month, depending on the house, depending on the area. Basement rentals, depending on the size, you can usually find a really nice two bedroom place for about 16 to 1800 per month month. Next up is grocery prices. Now I'm not going to go through them all because you can see them right there on the screen. It's a little harder to nail these down as prices fluctuate based on the time of year, where you shop, what kind of brands you buy and things like that. But this will just give you a general overview. You can definitely shop at the cheaper grocery stores like No Frills, Food Basics, even Walmart. If you want to buy things in bulk, then Costco is a really good option as well. But yeah, this will give you a general overview of what everyday items cost in Mississauga. When looking at the basics like meat, fruit, veggies, dairy, and grains, you're looking at an average of about 200 to 300 per month per person. If you start adding in things like snacks and alcohol and things like that, that number might go up to about 400 to 500 per month per person. Of course, you can keep these costs lower if you shop smart, you buy things on sale, and you're just on top of the grocery buying process. Next up is transportation.
condition. Of course, if you own your own car, prices will fluctuate wildly based on the car you drive and how much you drive it. You gotta factor in things like maintenance, gas, insurance, and all the great stuff that comes when you own a car. Car insurance is pretty expensive in Mississauga, so that's something you may wanna look out for. Gas prices in Mississauga generally fluctuate between $1.10 per liter to about $1.40. Some gas stations will be cheaper than others, and I use an app called Gas Buddy, which tells you the price of each gas station, so you can see what's around you and go to the cheapest one. Also, if you do have a Costco membership, the gas at Costco is generally much cheaper than anywhere else. For public transit, you can get a My Way monthly pass for $135, or you could pay single fare. If you're using cash, it's $4, and if you're using Presto, it's $310. What's Presto, you ask? It's basically this reloadable card that you tap on when you're going on a bus, and you could basically just auto load it so that every time your balance goes below a certain amount, you can just automatically add funds to your card, so you never really have to worry about it. And if you use it for the Go Transit, it'll actually actually give you a discount towards the end of the month based on how many times you've actually used your Presto card. Speaking of the Go Transit, there's no monthly pass or anything, but most people just use their Presto cards. The fare for the Go Train really just depends on how far you're going, what the distance is that you're traveling. So they calculate it based on what station you're leaving from and what station you're going to. Prices kind of fluctuate there, but it's generally about five to $10, probably in that seven to $8 range if you're leaving from Mississauga and going to downtown Toronto. Oh, and that's per trip. Next up is utilities. I tried to find the most accurate information as this price can definitely fluctuate depending on the size of your house and how much you actually use your utilities. So utilities including water, gas, hydro, heating, and cooling will generally cost you about 250 to 350 per month for a standard three bedroom house. Could be more, could be less depending on how you use them, like I said. Obviously simple things like turning off lights when you're not using them, taking shorter showers and things like that will help your utility costs. If you have teenage kids who like to take seven hour long showers, I'm kind of guilty of that sometimes, then your utility cost might be a little bit higher. For heating and cooling, if you have good energy efficient windows, then you can keep those costs down. Also, if you have a smart system that turns off the heat and the air conditioning when you're not home or even when you're sleeping, will definitely help bring those costs down as well. For internet, the two biggest providers are Bell and Rogers. They both have packages that start at about $85 per month. If you want the bare minimum package, they both have a package that's about $50 per month. There's also some other internet companies that might be cheaper, but I've never used them, so I don't know how reliable they are. So I can't really recommend them. Almost done here, so restaurants is next. As you can see, casual dining in Mississauga will cost you about $15 on average. A fast food meal at McDonald's or Wendy's or whatever will generally be about $10. And if you're going out on a date or something at a mid-range restaurant for a three course meal will be about $75 for two people. And then if you want some beer with your meal, it'll be about five to $8 on average. It really just depends where you're going, what the restaurant prices are and things like that. And then wine prices are a little bit more than the beer just based on my personal experience. Now, entertainment and activities. So movie tickets were around $13 pre-2020. To be completely honest, I haven't been to a theater in a year. I'm sure you know why. So I can't really confirm that. I tried to do some Googling and it looks like the prices may have gone up, but I'm not entirely sure. Either way, you can go on a Tuesday and it's going to be cheaper on a Tuesday than any other day of the week. Bowling varies based on the time and the place, but it's generally about $30 to $45 an hour to rent the lane. So what you could do is gather some friends. You can all split the cost and then you can go bowling for an hour and it wouldn't be too expensive. Also make sure you factor in the whole shoe rental thing. Do people actually like have their own bowling shoes? If you're looking to stay in shape, there's a ton of gyms in Mississauga, both big and small. A monthly gym membership will cost you anywhere from 30 to $80 per month, depending on where you're going. Obviously the higher range of that is like the really nice gyms. Of course, since 2020 and all the crazy stuff that happened, things have shifted to more of an online based training. There's lots of programs for that, both paid and free. If you're into yoga, my wonderful girlfriend actually runs an online membership program where you get two live classes a week and then one meditation class a week, all live through Zoom. And then you can also replay it later if you actually miss the live session. If you're interested in that and want more details, just hit me up, I can connect you with her and then you can see if you'd like to join or not. So on top of all all those things, there's a lot of things you could do for free. So there's over 480 parks in the city. All of that's free. They have events all the time in the city and most of those are free as well. If you're interested in all the things you could do in Mississauga, click the little slidey thing above. Anyways, guys, that pretty much wraps this one up. If you're looking to buy a house in Mississauga or the greater Toronto area in general, please feel free to reach out to me. You can text me, email me, call me, DM me on Instagram. If you wanna start looking at houses or you wanna talk about your goals and your plans, hit me up and we can start having those conversations. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you like the video, hit the like button. We've got some great videos coming up 
up. So stay tuned. If you're interested in seeing my next videos, please hit that subscribe button and, you know, tap the thing. Until next time, thank you. Enjoy yourselves and have a great week.